In this video, I give a quick tutorial on how to merge data uh, from sort of multiple data frames into one data frame. And also, if you have, say, more than two data frames, I'm going to show a quick and easy way to merge them all into one data frame. Went out to the FRED database, which gives a lot of uh, series, like time series databases on macro aggregates. Here's the web address here if you want to go check out a whole bunch of time series out there. Um, and you can get each series just by clicking a download button and then saving the file onto your hard drive. And that's what I did. I did this with four, partic four series that are, say, maybe of interest. And maybe I want to relate these variables to one another. Um, one of them is called CPI, that's the Consumer Price Index. Other one is a Gross Domestic Product Series. Another one is the Oil Price Index, or uh, Oil Price Series. And then another one is a Consumer Sentiment Series. The strange thing about this is that these data are available monthly for the CPI, Oil Prices, and Consumer Sentiment, but only quarterly for GDP. So we, we can read these in. Now we've got data frame objects uh, by each of these names in, in R. And you can see that they're not all the same um, length. They're actually all different lengths. So if you were thinking, well, I've got the, each of these variables, and I want to just match them and then just sort of bind them together, maybe I'll use data frame or C bind. Well, that's just not going to work. I, I can't use a, a command like this to bind the data frames together because they don't have the same length. So it's not going to bind observation to observation. It's not going to do the matching for us. Fortunately, R has a really s slick command called merge. It allows you to merge two data frames together. Uh, and what it does is it automatically looks for a common column. And so one thing we can do is we could ask, well, what is this common column? Or we can look at the CPI data frame, and you can see that it has a date, and it has it also has the CPI variable. So if we look at these dates, what we'll see is it's a year, a month, and uh, a day of the month, and it's that's the that's the form of of the information. And if we look at, say, GDP, well, the date is very similar, year, month, and date, but the months come less frequently. And notice that the days uh, in the GDP column might actually match the days in the CPI column. That's just the first day of the month uh, when it's recorded. And so we could do some, we could actually use this command called merge. It's going to match the observations in exactly the way that we'd like to do uh, to match these observations. It can match the CPI data frame uh, to the GDP data frame. So let's go ahead and merge those and then see what this looks like. Well, now it's, uh, it's the same number of observations that we had for GDP, but now we've got a CPI column and it's matched everything into this data frame. So if we wanted to relate the consumer price index to GDP. Well, now we have a data frame that will allow us to do that. It's really easy now to run regressions uh, comparing CPI to GDP. And this merge command allowed us to merge these two data frames into one. And uh, we even keep the information about what date CPI and GDP were observed. Well, if we want to match the oil price series, we can do the same thing. Uh, we can merge that with the sort of existing data frame looks just like we had before. There are 256 rows, extra column called oil price, and those are the oil prices uh, observed on each of those dates. And so we're, we're getting information on an additional variable. And now if we wanted to, for good measure, we could also merge together this final variable, consumer sentiment, just to make sure it worked. Let's type the data frame, ask it to report this data frame, we get it, and Lo and behold, we get another variable added to our data set. Okay, so that was the long way to read in a whole bunch of different uh, data, data frames together and then merge them together into one data frame. Suppose you had, say, 15 different uh, series from Fred, for example, or maybe 15 different files that you'd like to merge together. 
uh, this seems like sort of an unnatural way to do it. You'd have to, a lot of copying and pasting, a lot of typing. Uh, it seems like you should be able to do this in a much uh, faster way. Um, so, uh, for example, here we would have had to read in 15 different files if I had 15 different time series, and then write 14 different merge commands. Um, and I would get uh, I would at the end of that I would have a, a file that has merged all of these together. Well, so I uh, wrote a function that actually allows us to do all of this in one fell swoop. So the way the function works and um, what you'll have to do is the function is called mult merge. And so here I'm just going to define it. Um, and mult merge takes a path, and this path is going to be the location of a folder in which you have a set of files that you'd like to merge all of them into one data frame. If there's any file in there that you don't want merged, uh, take it out of that folder before you run this command. So that's that's the idea. So this is the path of the folders, not the path of the file. And the folder contains only data sets that you'd like to merge. And each of these data sets has a common column. And the column is formatted exactly the same, and it's going to match observations to observations. In sort of our example, is I've got these files that I merged together above, it used, uh, and I read them all in, and they were all in the same file folder. And so what, what we can do is then just use the mult merge command, and let's call it my data. Uh, and if I want, if I want to read in all four of these files and then merge them all together into one file, this mult merge will do the trick. So we go ahead and read that in. My data mult merge. It gives us exactly what we had before. And so uh, this is going to be perhaps a more convenient way to read in multiple data frames, uh, sort of merge multiple data frames all in one fell swoop. Uh, not only does it merge multiple data frames all in one fell swoop, uh, so that's what this reduce uh, function merge xy data list does, but it also uh, it also reads all of the data frames in together as well. So it's a mult read and merge. So what I did here in this example, instead of running seven commands, four to get the data in, three to merge the data together, I was able to run one command after I define my mult merge command. Now, I only need to define the mult merge command once, and then I can use the mult merge command as many times as I want to save myself lines of code. Uh, so this, this may be a useful trick to use, and hopefully you'll find it useful in your applications.